Man, what a crazy week of signings we have. It's not called free agent frenzy for a reason. The last week has been absolutely nuts. Teams dropping money. Here's money. Here's money. Woo, everybody gets money. But Jim Rutherford, oh, no, no, no. You want to play with Crosby? Want to play with Malkin? Here you go. Take $4 million. I'm shopping in the basement of Valley Village, going in the bargain bin. I'm getting myself some good deals. And get himself some good deals he did. So, um, just to recap, teams drop bombs and bombs of money on players, but the Penguins do not, knowing that the Penguins are short present count salary cap space, and they still have to resign some key RFAs like Brandon Sutter, newly acquired Nick Spalling, um, Jim Rutherford says, okay, you know what, I need to short my depth, especially since I traded away, uh, arguably the Penguins' best forward, well, not arguably, he is the Penguins' best forward in James Neal, which I still think was a terrible trade. He redeemed himself a bit, not all the way, but a bit. He did a pretty good job on free agent frenzy, better than I was expecting, that's for sure, and he arguably got the best player of the day in Christian Ehrhoff, a one-year, $4 million deal. That is an absolute st- Deal. And if he plays well, maybe they'll resign him. And I imagine they probably will resign him. Uh, he's a heck of a player, and he had terrible numbers in Buffalo. But he's actually an upgrade over Matt Niskanen, the big player who they lost. And he's a definitely an upgrade over Brooks Orpic and Derek England, the other two defensemen that they lost. And he signed for a much cheaper deal than Brooks Orpic and Matt Niskanen, and basically the same amount of money as Derek England. Great work, Rutherford. A plus signing there. Everyone thought that he was going to take, you know, five million dollars for five years, but no. He said right away, as soon as I got bought out, I wanted to go to Pittsburgh on a one-year deal. I was fine with that. And I mean, he's laughing all the way to the bank. He's making like a one million dollars a year for Buffalo for the next twelve years. So I think he's doing okay. Um, then uh, the Penguins uh, were able to get. Two other great deals for a great price. Um, Thomas Grice for $1 million from Phoenix, the backup goalie, uh, who had a 920 save percentage last year and was quite good for Phoenix when Mike Smith got hurt, although it was not enough to get them into the playoffs, but that was not his fault. Um, however, his career average is about 914, so it's not that good. It's about what... Um, it's really not much better than Jeff Sackhoff was this year. I wasn't really sure why he got another goalie because the Penguins didn't need another goalie. They had Fleury and Zakov both on one-way deals, which means that now Grice and Zakov have to battle it out, and whoever loses is going to be sent on waivers to be sent down and will obviously be picked up. Uh, Thomas Grice probably has the edge just based on name and merit alone, but I thought Jeff, Scott, Jeff Zakoff was fine last year. I thought that was it was a good signing, but it was unnecessary. I would rather have seen him spend the money somewhere else, like trying to get Nick like Kluman uh, for the four depth, for example. Um, but whatever. It's one year, $1 million deal, so it's a virtually low risk. Um, then they got Blake Como, one year, 700000 Uh I wasn't really a big fan of Blake Como. I didn't really think he was all that great, but uh, he did get almost 30 goals playing with John Tavares in the, on the Islanders. He was quite good for Columbus last year. Uh, he's a solid defensive depth guy. Um, he can play in the fourth line, play in the penalty kill, and he's definitely an upgrade over any of the players the guys had last season who are all gone, by the way. And can I just say, last year, I don't understand where GM's heads are at. Derek Englund, $2.9 million per year. He made league minimum last year. How on earth would he make $2.9 million for three years? Come on. Like, teams can have, cannot have looked at the Penguins' bottom six in defense and say, I want to go pick those guys up, yet they all got signed to good deals. So, good deals for them, uh, bad deals for the team. So, good for them, but it's, it's terrible. You should rain. It was smart on Jim Rutherford not to resign them, uh, especially Tanner Glass. Uh, Joe Vitale, I think he's decent, but uh, there's much better players that we have waiting in the wings. Um, so I like the Blake Como signing. Um, and Thomas Grice and Christian Ehrhoff, three Germans, and everyone's making a big deal about all the European signings because ratios did not favor Europeans. I don't really care if a good, if the guy's a good player, he's a good player. To me, their nationality means nothing, but it is kind of cool that there's three Germans on the team. Um, and now actually, uh, 
sorry, that's two Germans, but there are three Germans because the Penguins were able to re-sign Marcel Gotch a little later. The only one of uh, their 11 UFAs they were able to retain, he made $1.7 million last year. He took a pay cut, a $500,000 pay cut, and is only making one point two next year, again, for one-year deal. That is a great signing. Um, I loved him last year. Uh, his puck possession numbers weren't great, but he played with a atrocious teammate, so I think he plays with a better bottom, um, bottom six, a better fourth line. He'll probably be, do a lot better, and he might not have been fully recovered from his injury. Injury. It looked pretty bad, uh, but he was great on the face-offs. He added a lot to the team. I really liked the pickup by Ray Shear last year. Very underrated, and that was a great signing. Um, and the center depth is pretty good. Crosby, Malkin, Sutter, and Gotch, although they still have to re-sign Sutter. Um, I'll get to that in a second. However, their wings leaves little to be desired. Uh, the departure of James Neal left a big hole. Uh, Patrick Hornfest will probably slip in there, but it's not the same. Uh, he's not the same type of player. Uh, he's not as good. Bo Bennett will also probably go into the top six, but he's coming off his third wrist surgery, only age 22. So who knows how effective he'll be. Um, I really love this kid. I think he's a lot of talent, but uh, it's just really unfortunate he keeps getting hurt. But I hope he can stay healthy because uh, I definitely think he's a top six player. Um, then, to add more depth to their bottom six, the next day, July 2nd, Penguins signed Steve Downey, one year, one million. Again, shopping in the bargain bin. That is a great signing. Him and Erhoff definitely took what I call, or what I saw on Twitter actually, a Crosby discount. 29 other teams definitely would have offered them more money, but they said, nope, I'm going to take less because I want to win. I want to both Crosby and Malkin. I mean, I think Steve Downey's a crazy nutcase, and he's an idiot, and he's a rat, and he runs around, and he almost hit hurt Crosby really badly, but he was great for Team Canada, the World Juniors. I uh, remember how effective he was, and he can get you off your game, man. He is the kind of player you want to have on your team, not playing against you. However, he does have a bit of a James Neal, Matt Cook history in that he does have supplemental discipline issues. He has been suspended before, and he has had trouble staying healthy, just like James Neal, and just like the Penguins' top six players, like their team all of last season. So I will look for that. I really hope that Rick Tockett can rein him in and help him, because he's apparently the reason why Steve Downey signed. But I mean, if he does do crazy shit, it's only a one-year, $1 million deal, so you don't need to bring him back. It's a pretty low-risk signing. So uh, the Penguins' bottom six looks a lot better. Uh, their top six, I don't think is as strong, but overall, Jeremy Rutherford really, really showed up their four depth in a span of two days, and I thought he did a fantastic job. Their top four defense, when Matta gets back, is way better. You have Latang, Martin, Matta, and Erhoff, and then, you know, Bertuzzo and Dupre and Dumoulin probably um, with the young guys, and then hopefully Skidio's not playing because he's terrible. Um, in the addition of Downey and Como, uh, let's, you know, a uh, player like Craig Adams sit, who's just completely terrible, and it gives him way more puck possession. Um, however, this leaves uh, the Penguins with only about $8 million left in cap room, and they still have six RFAs to sign, most notably Brandon Setter, who probably take up almost half of that. Um, I think he's looking for a 3 to $4 million deal. I wouldn't give him four. Um... I think he made just over $2 million last year. I'd probably give him a slight raise, maybe 2.53, but I wouldn't give him much more than that. Um, I mean, Nikolai Kluman got $4 million from the Islanders, and I really wanted him, but I was not going to pay him $4 million. I would have paid him $3 million, so I don't think Setter should get $4 million. Uh, Nick Spalling, the newest Penguin, is filing for arbitration. I don't think it'll go to a hearing. It doesn't usually get to a hearing. Um, he made just over $1 million last year, so... I don't see him being able to make much more. Jason Magna I would probably be signed on a two-way deal along with uh, Simone Dupre and Philip Samuelson. Um, because, you know, he can still be sent down. But I really like Magna. I really liked what I saw him from last year. I hope he stays with the Penguins permanently. I also would have loved to keep Brian Gibbons, but unfortunately, Lumbus snatched him up, which was too bad because I liked his speed and his versatility. Um... Anyways, so, Jim Rutherford has redeemed himself a bit. The era is not as bad as we thought, although I will miss the real deal. 
Uh, but anyways, that's all for this video. Sorry it's been so late. Um, I've just been super busy this past week. But anyways, please like if you like this video. Subscribe if you really like it. Tell your friends. Share with everyone. And um, when the Penguins get their assistant coach, which I think will come soon, I will make an update talking about that. 